It's good when idols get knocked off pedestals. Notes from the Edge of the Narrative Matrix. Jeffrey Epstein, Woody Allen, and Noam Chomsky went out to dinner one night. There's no punchline. That's just something that happened. Of course, nothing that comes out about Epstein himself will ever be as significant as the fact that powerful intelligence agencies use kids as sex slaves to manipulate our society with blackmail. Anti-China propaganda needs to be opposed ferociously. U.S. military encirclement of China is rapidly increasing, and the floodgates are being opened to pour weapons into Taiwan as quickly as possible, and it's getting almost no resistance anywhere. People barely know it's happening. The propaganda campaign against China needs to be opposed right now because it's a threat right now, and also because otherwise, when the time comes to actually send out the warships, the public will just consent to it, since the war propaganda went unchallenged that whole time. After a certain point, a propaganda narrative can gain enough momentum that there's simply no resisting it. We can't just ignore this. Here's an article by Antiwar.com. Taiwanese leader meets with John Bolton, calls for deeper ties with U.S. It's a tweet by Caitlin. And there he is. Bolton shows up literally every single time there's a new opportunity to push for war. We don't rage hard enough about the fact that there are human beings whose actual job is to try and get as many people violently killed as possible at every opportunity. The U.S. alliance is indisputably encircling Russia and China in ways it would never permit itself to be encircled. The only way to defend this discrepancy is to say, well, it's okay when we do it because we are good guys and they are bad guys, which is an infant's understanding. Believing that democracies should be allowed to do things that autocracies shouldn't be is just subscribing to the adult-sounding iteration of the good guys versus bad guys plotline of every children's cartoon. It can't withstand an instant of critical thought. Even if you do subscribe to an infantile good guys versus bad guys worldview, all facts and evidence say the U.S. should, if anything, be considered the latter. Russia and China haven't spent the 21st century killing people by the millions in wars of aggression, for example. Russia and China haven't been strangling entire nations around the world with economic warfare for the crime of disobedience. Russia and China haven't been encircling the planet with hundreds of military bases in order to rule the world. Russia and China haven't been plotting to destroy any nation which disobeys them. Only the U.S. is doing these things. A great question to ask someone is, what conspiracy theory do you think might be true? If they struggle to come up with even one, then that means they don't question anything. If they don't question anything, they're not thinking at all. If you believe the official story about everything that happens, then you're not thinking, you're repeating. If the only thing you question is the questioners, then you're not an individual with your own mind, you're an enforcer of the status quo. You're as much a separate person with your own thoughts as a car radio speaker is separate from the sound of the disc jockey. The contradictions and hypocrisy of the Empire are so in your face right now that it sometimes seems barely worthwhile to mention it. But it needs to be pointed out every time because the majority of people still manage not to see it. Example, tweet by Brianna Joy Gray. Biden at the correspondence dinner. Journalism is not a crime. Julian Assange conspicuously missing from the evening's remarks. I think it's probably a good thing when our idols get knocked off the pedestals we put them on. Chomsky, Bernie, the Dalai Lama. It's not healthy to elevate others to a lofty status above ourselves instead of seeing them as normal human beings who are as capable of error as anyone else. Our entire culture, movies, school books, religions, etc., tells us to always be looking for heroes, tells us to look outside ourselves for celebrated leaders who will show us where to go. And I just think that's a terrible dereliction of duty, of our duty to find the truth for ourselves. One of the worst mistakes you can make is neglecting your responsibility to cultivate a truth-based understanding of reality for yourself. People hand off that responsibility to journalists, pundits, thought leaders, teachers, preachers, and gurus, But to do this is to neglect a very sacred sacred duty. As Terence McKenna said, you have to take seriously the notion that understanding the universe is your responsibility, because the only understanding of the universe that will be useful to you is your own understanding. Don't pass off that responsibility to someone else. 
You are the sole authority over your own understanding of the world. You have no business abdicating that authority because someone else is speaking about something with a confident and authoritative tone. Find out the truth for yourself. Place blind faith in no one when it comes to understanding reality, including me, obviously. It's disempowering to have idols on pedestals because they create the false impression that the solution to our problems exists somewhere outside ourselves. In reality, no one individual will ever solve the massive problems humanity now faces. It's going to take all of us. Truth doesn't exist in some other person. It's for you to sort out for yourself. Revolution isn't hiding in some celebrated hero. It's going to come from within us. Enlightenment doesn't exist in some lofty future state. It's here presently and just needs to be recognized. The healthy way to relate to famous figures is to relate to them as anyone else. If they say something useful, then use it. If they say something unhelpful, then don't. You never need to elevate them so high that there's an expectation that they'll always get everything right. Or that you feel a sense of disappointment or betrayal if they get something wrong. It's disempowering to put people on pedestals, and it's no fun to be on the pedestal either. I always cringe a bit when I see someone constantly praising me as a person, instead of focusing on the specific merits of my work on a case-by-case -case basis. Not because I have a problem receiving compliments, but because I know they're going to have to knock me off that pedestal one day. Anyone who's sincerely interested in truth will eventually have to knock some idols off of pedestals, because keeping them there inevitably becomes an obstacle to your own understanding of what's true. The whole relationship is just deeply unpleasant for everyone involved. Hero stories keep you looking for heroes outside yourself. Idols keep you looking for truth outside yourself. Gurus keep you looking for enlightenment outside yourself. It's good to make use of all the knowledge and wisdom that exists in the world, but don't let it get you digging for treasure in the wrong place.